Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build guide and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the Montag XR. Now this is their latest budget case, it can be had for less than £50 in the UK at the moment, but is it any good? Make sure you stick to the end of the video to find out. And take a look at the other parts I'm going to be building with today. For the motherboard I'm going to be using the ASRock B650E, it's a legend Wi-Fi. For the CPU I'm going to be using AMD's Ryzen 7, it's the 7800X3D. Keeping our CPU cool I've got a 240mm AIO from Montec, it's the Hyperflow RGB. For RAM I've got 32GB of Clev's Crass V RGB, DDR5 at 7200 mega transfers per second. For storage I've got a single Gen 4 NVMe drive from Samsung, it's their 990 Pro in 2TB capacity. Powering the whole build, I've got an 850 watt, a fully modular ATX 3.1 power supply from XPG. It's their Core Reactor 2 VE. For case fans, I'm going to be using Thermaltake CT120 EX Reverse ARGB Sync fans. And for the graphics card, I'm going to be using the Aorus Master RTX 4070. Okay, that's all the parts. Let's make a start by taking a detailed look at the case. To remove our tempered glass side panel, we simply need to pull it out from the top, and then it can be lifted up and away. And our tempered glass front panels are moved in exactly the same way. So one test I like to do in cases we get removable tempered glass panels at the front and side is push on the top to see how much it flexes. And actually given this case's budget price, I'm incredibly impressed. There's very little flex in this case at all. To remove our other side panel, we've got two cam to thumb screws at the back, which we need to loosen. Then we're able to pull the panel backwards and lift away. And if we take a look at the back of this panel, we've got a magnetically attached dust filter, which is going to be over our side fans intake. Up top, we've got a magnetically attached dust filter, which can simply be pulled away. And on the bottom of the case, we've got another magnetically attached dust filter over our power supplies intake. And again, it can simply be lifted away. Take a look at our case's front I.O. We've got a power and reset button. We've got a separate headphone and microphone jack. We've got two USB Type-A ports and a single Type-C port. So it's great to see we've got two 120mm PWM ARGB reverse blade fans pre-installed on the side of the case, as well as a standard 120mm PWM ARGB fan at the rear. At the rear of the case, it is possible to mount up to a 140mm fan, although on the side of the case, there's no radiator support and you are limited to just two 120mm fans. Up top you can fit up to three 120 or two 140mm fans or up to a 360mm radiator. There's no support at the top for 280mm radiators. And the bottom of the case is possible to mount up to three 120mm fans. You're simply going to set your fans into place on the bottom of the case. And well done to Montec, they include 12 of the long radiator screws. You're going to need to screw these fans to the bottom. They're simply going to go down through the fans and you've got holes in the bottom to screw them into. And you can see we've got this perforated panel on the side, which is where your bottom mounted fans are going to get their intake from. And you can see if you're not going to be using fans at the bottom, there is a cutout for bringing your GPU cables through. In terms of motherboard support, the case of motherboards up to ATX in size, and you want to go with a CPR killer, the maximum height supported is 175mm. And definitely a feature I wasn't expecting on this case, given its budget price point, is we've got rubber grommets over to the right hand side of our motherboard. At the rear of the case, we've got seven horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets, and in terms of graphics card support, the maximum length supported is up to 420 millimeters. Moving to the rear of the case and down at the bottom, we've got our instruction manual and case accessory bag. So this is everything that comes in our case accessory bag. So we've got all our screws individually labeled. We've got a cleaning cloth. We've got a speaker, some standoffs, the standoff insertion and removal tool, some Velcro cable straps, absolutely loads of cable ties, and some spare clips. So taking a look at the rear of the case, we've got cutouts in sensible places, as we mentioned, rubber grommets over these two, and we've got plenty of cable tie-down points, as well as two Velcro cable straps in the middle. Cable routing space also looks to be pretty good. So it's great to see that Montac have daisy-chained all our fans together, so we've just got one PWM and one ARGB cable to plug into our motherboard. In terms of our other case cables, we've got a HD audio cable, USB 3.0 cable, front panel Type-C, and brilliant to see that our front panel connectors are organized into a single cable. We're gonna be able to mount a two and a half inch drive behind the motherboard tray. There's this removable bracket here. There's a non captive thumb screw that you're gonna to need to remove, and then you're gonna be able to take the bracket out. Simply fix your drive onto here and screw it in from the back. We've got a hard drive cage down at the bottom of the case and it is movable and removable. You see we've got additional slots here, so it is possible to move the hard drive cage further towards your power supply. To do this, there's two thumb screws at the bottom of the case we're going to need to remove. And then we're going to be able to pull our hard drive cage forward to remove it from the case. So in the hard drive cage itself, you're going to be able to fit a three and a half inch drive. It's simply going to slot into place and then you're going to screw it in from the side. On top of the hard drive cage, you need to fit a three and a half inch drive. 
Again, it's going to sit up here and you're going to be able to screw it in from underneath. Or alternately, on top, you can fit a two and a half inch drive. And again, it's just a simple matter of screwing it in from underneath. The case supports full-size DTX power supplies up to a maximum length of 230 millimeters. Although if you do remove the hard drive gauge, you've got absolutely loads of space at the bottom. We're now ready to start working the motherboard and we're going to be installing our CPU, our M.2 SSD and our RAM before we install the motherboard in the case. To open the CPU socket, we need to push this lever down and out, bring it all the way to the middle of the motherboard, and then we can go ahead and open the socket cover up. We can then lower our CPU down carefully into the socket, making sure we've got the text the correct way up. And once we're happy it's sitting correctly, we can go ahead and close the socket cover down again. And then as we close this lever, the black bit of plastic will pop off, and we'll put it in our motherboard box for safekeeping. We're going to be installing our M.2 SSD in the top slot, so we'll go ahead and remove the heatsink. We can then insert our M.2 SSD into the slot. And you'll notice that when we flatten it down, the same screw that holds our heatsink in place is going to hold our drive in place. If you're using the motherboard from new, there'll be some plastic protection on the back of the heatsink we're going to need to remove, and then we can replace our heatsink. We're going to be installing our RAM in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU, so I'm just going to open the clips on these slots. Then all we need to do is line our RAM up with the slot. And once we're happy everything's lined up correctly, it's just some firm pressure and it's going to clip into place. Next, we're going to start our motherboard into the case, line it up with the standoffs at the back, and then we'll secure it into place with nine of the motherboard screws from the case accessory bag. Next, we're going to want to get our case cables plugged in. Our HD audio cable is going to go down this header on the bottom left of the motherboard. So we'll bring it through the cutout and get it plugged in. Two headers along, we've got one of this motherboard's three ARGB headers. So we can bring the ARGB cable coming from our fans through and get it plugged in. Another two headers along, we've got a system fan header. So we'll bring the PWM cable coming from our fans through and plug it in. Our front panel connectors are going to go into this header here. So we'll bring it through the cutout and we're going to plug it in with the front panel text facing up the way. Our USB 3.0 cable is going to go into this header here. So we'll bring it through the cutout line it up with the header and push into place. And then just below that, we've got our front panel type C header. So we'll bring the cable through the cutout, line it up and push into place. And then we'll just pull all the excess cable through to the back. So as I've mentioned, our power supply is fully modular. It comes without any of the cables plugged in. I've gone ahead and plugged the cables in that we're going to need. So I've plugged in our 24 pin cable, two 8 pin EPS cables for additional power to our CPU and our 12 volt two by six cable to power our graphics card. So this is our power supply's intake fan, and it is important we install this facing down the way where it can get cooler from underneath the case. And then we can secure our power supply into place before the power supply screws from the case accessory bag. We can then plug our two 8-pin EPS cables into the two headers at the top left of the motherboard, and our 24-pin cable in as well. So I'm just sizing our I.O. up in the case, and although Montag have sent me out a 240mm I.O. for this build, I just don't think it's going to look great at the top. It doesn't look great here. If we centre it over, it's still not great with space on either side, and I do think a 360 is going to look better. So I'm going to use the 360mm version that I already have. So the first thing for us to do installing our I.O. is to change the bracket. Because we're using an AMD motherboard, there's a different bracket we're going to need to install. So remove our Intel bracket, it's just a simple matter of pushing it up the way, and then it can be pulled off. And then we can take our AMD bracket and slide it down into place. So if you are using the AI from new, there'll be some thermal paste pre-applied to the coal pits. So just be careful you don't damage it at this stage. Next, then we're going to take one of these little clips and put them on the underside. And then we'll take one of the thumb screws and just put it on loosely on top. And then it's just same thing on the other side. Just before we set our AI into the case, I'm going to plug our CPU fan header in at the top. And then I'm going to pass the rest of the cable, including the ARGB cable, through to the back. And then we can set our I.O. up into place at the top of the case. And then we can secure the I.O. into place using the short radiator screws at the top. We can then replace the dust filter at the top. Next, I'm going to add some thermal paste to the center of the CPU. Remember, if you are using the I.O. from new, you'll have thermal paste pre-applied to the cold plate, so there's no need to add any to the CPU. Then we just need to get the clips in the I.O. over the clips in the motherboard. So there's the top one. And that's over the top clip. And then we'll just get it over the bottom clip as well. And that's it over the bottom clip. And then we just need to tighten each of the thumb screws in turn. So our pump header is the one next to our CPU fan header. So we'll get the PWM cable plugged into it. And then we can just pull the excess cable through to the back. We've got two ARGB headers at the top of the motherboard. So I'm going to plug the ARGB cable into one of those. 
And again, we'll just bring all the excess cable through to the back. The ARGB cable that we've plugged into the motherboard has a little splitter cable coming from it. So we can pull the plastic protection off and then we'll plug the cable coming from our fans on the radiator into it. So you'll notice I forgot to plug our 24 pin and EPS cables in earlier on. I will have shown you the cutout of me plugging it into the motherboard in the correct place. So you're following along with the guide. But what I will do is just bring it through now and get them plugged in. So this is really going to be one of the easiest fan installation videos that I have made. So if we take a look at the fans, on one side of the fans we have these little metal pins and on the other side we have these little metal plates. So in terms of joining the fans, all you're going to want to do is make sure that you're joining the pins with the plates. And once you have, the fans are going to connect magnetically, so it's just a matter of bringing them into contact with the other fan and they're going to clip into place. And there we go. That's our three fans joined together. You get three connecting cables allowing you to connect the fans up individually if you wish. So you'll notice in the end of the connecting cable we do have an arrow, just a matter of lining the two arrows up and the connector is going to clip into place. We've got two cables coming from the connector. On one of them we've got a 4-pin PWM cable. That just needs to go into the system fan header on your motherboard to power the fans and allow you to control their speed. And on the end of the other cable you've got a 3-pin 5-volt ARGB cable. And again, we plug that into a header on our motherboard. It's going to allow us to control the lighting on the fans. And good to see the thermal kick have included a daisy chainable connector allowing you to plug additional ARGB devices into this cable. So then we can set our fans into place on the bottom of the case. And we'll secure the fans into place using the included long radiator screws. We've got another system fan header down at the bottom of the motherboard. So I'm going to plug the PWM cable into it. And then we'll just pass all the excess cable through to the back. And I'm just going to pass the RGB cable through to the back. We've got another RGB header at the top of the case. So we'll bring the cable through the, from the back and get it plugged in. We're now ready to install our graphics card and we're going to need to remove the second and third expansion slot cover from the top. So we can open this little cover up by loosening the thumb screw. And that's going to give us access to the slot covers. We can then open the clip in the top PCIe slot on the motherboard. Next we can line our graphics card up with the slot. And once we're happy everything's lined up correctly it's just some firm pressure. And it's going to clip into place. And we can secure the graphics card into place at the back. Then we can bring our graphics card power cable through the cutout at the bottom, line it up with our graphics card and push into place. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management to get the panels back on again. So that's the build complete and looking absolutely amazing. If you don't know how to set the PC up, including installing Windows, the drivers, the RGB software, entering the BIOS, updating the BIOS, and adjusting all the BIOS settings, I made another video that covers all of that, and you'll find a link to that video in the description. So let's take a look at the temperatures. So our Ryzen 7 7800X 3D idled at 39 degrees and reached a maximum of 68 degrees during a 10 minute idle 64 stability test. The Aorus Master RTX 4070 idled at 29 degrees and reached a maximum of 52 degrees during the stability test. We had average noise levels of 37 decibels at idle and 51 decibels under load. So as promised at the start, I'm going to share my thoughts on the case having done a build on it. And for a case costing less than £50, it is absolutely incredible what Montec are offering for this price. So you're getting temper glass on the front and on the side which join without a pillar. A nice strong frame behind it. You've got front panel type C. We've got three included good quality PWM fans. Montag have gone a step further and have actually included reverse blade fans on the side with nice ARGB on them. We've got rubber grommets, again features you don't normally expect in a case at this price point. Velcro cable straps, a really good case accessory bag with everything individually labeled. 
and lots of extras in there, including Velcro cable straps, cable ties, standoff insertion and removal tool, and all the screws you need to mount fans at the bottom. And there is bigger manufacturers who don't include all these things. We've also got good dust filtration over all the intakes. There is magnetically attached dust filters, no cheap sheets of mesh anywhere. So this case is absolutely brilliant. And as far as budget cases go, this is the case that offers the best value for money out of any case that I have reviewed. So hopefully you have enjoyed this full step-by-step -step PC build guide. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.